Patch 30 or the Fallout Worlds DLC is now live and I'm sure you are wondering about all the new things you can't miss. So here's an essentials guide with the 10 new major features. Let's do this. Hello, hello everyone, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Fallout Worlds is finally here and at first glance you might think there's not a lot of new content, but that's not really the case. In general, the new content is very condensed into a few points, that's why it gives you the illusion of very little new content. Anyway, with patch 30 we have the infamous Fallout Worlds mode, followed by the second expansion of daily operations, a new main menu, a new season, let's not forget about the upcoming Spooky Scorched event, Treat or Treat, a new mini event for camps, a new location to explore as well, new rewards to collect and so much more. Let's cut the intro short, we've got a lot to cover in this one, so let's jump right into it. Let's warm up with the new main menu cinematics and a change of music, literally. You can bid farewell to the previous Steel Rain Brotherhood of Steel cinematics, they are being replaced by existing locations in the world since, well, they are not new locations live with the Fallout Worlds DLC, but as they usually add cinematics from new locations live with that same DLC, but in this case it does not apply. As I recently unveiled in a news video, they chose mostly popular locations like Vault 76, the Red Rocket Workshop, the Charleston Capitol Building and Flatwoods with a view to the new River George Bridge. These are the marked locations. They also selected a few marked ones, like a mill south of Watauga, a foggy scene with a windmill and the Mothman in the mire, or a watchtower in the forest. As always, the cinematics are stunning and they are a good representation of the 76th world. As for the music, hmm, but as they went back to the origins, that's right, you can now listen to the original main theme music from the release days, the one and Wally. It makes me feel nostalgic and I think that was exactly what they went for here. New main menu? Check! Now let's go over the new play menu featuring the infamous Fallout Worlds. The feedback during the public test has been a disaster. Both Reddit and Bethesda's Discord are flooded with negative feedback about his mode, mostly due to no progression to adventure mode and lack of incentives. But that's not the focus here, so let's keep on going. Now, the first time you log in after the patch, you will find a very different play interface. For instance, the nuclear winter mode is now gone, and instead of three game modes, there are four. Two of them are new, public worlds and custom worlds. Before I explain the difference, keep in mind that every Fallout world share a couple of rules. First of all, your progression there cannot carry back to adventure mode or private worlds, it never happens. Yep, what happens in Fallout Worlds stays in Fallout Worlds and that's it. Secondly, you cannot earn or unlock account rewards, like completing challenges for example. Now, Public Worlds is like the adventure mode of Fallout or Custom Worlds, anyone can join at random, however they follow pre-made layouts. Right now Bethesda has released 5 different ones, but there could be more coming in the future. Each mode focuses on a concept, for example, Happy Builder extends and enforces building rules to ensure players can build more and anything they want. You can build at marked locations, you can build more, your budget can be increased, the radius too, there's a lot of building rules. In contrast, we have the high risk mode centered on PvP. It kinda simulates the old survival mode in my view. It has fast travel disabled, players drop additional loot on death, legendary effects are disabled as well, this one is new though, and PvP is always open. Now these layouts are not static, they rotate regularly. During the PTS they rotated every week, but for the official servers they should rotate 
once per month and that's it. Now moving to custom worlds, it's like your own private heaven if you have followed first. Up to 8 players can join you as per usual with private stuff. First members can remain in your server even when you are gone. This one is new for custom worlds only. You can access dozens of server settings and create your own personalized world. There are 3 default slots where you can test and create separate realities. You can even choose an icon a name and add a description to ensure you never get confused between slots. As for the settings, they are divided into combat, general and workshop or camp. There's tons of them as you can see here and I have already explained and exemplified how each one of them works in my Fallout Worlds overview video so feel free to go there for more details since this feature is dense and comes with a lot of options to discuss. I want to mention a few more things here though. Wally change settings will appear in your slots. If you leave everything as standard, then the setting overview will show as empty, as in you did not change anything. Moreover, when Bethesda first released Fallout Worlds, there was no easy way to re-import your characters from Adventure. You had always to make a new slot or delete one if you had all busy and then create from scratch. But now there is one button to quickly re-import your selected character into a specific slot, as shown in the footage. It takes a little bit, but it does work fine. X is the default key for PC. This obviously deletes your progression in the respective slot with that same character, so be careful. Moving forward, building your custom world usually takes a while. My average is about one minute. And sadly, sometimes it gets stuck in searching for world. When that happens, you should restart the process because building world is what you need to see. Otherwise, it means it's not building anything and you're just there waiting for nothing because it's stuck. Keep in mind, I'm speeding this up by three times in the footage. That's why it looks fast, but it's really not. It actually took me three minutes to build a world here due to this nasty bug. Lastly, I just want to say that Fallout Worlds feels more like test or challenge worlds. You can easily and quickly test almost anything you want there. For example, if you want something as legendary Legendary, you know, any item you own or can create, you can just craft legendaries non-stop until you get the effects you want. You can also explore all the rewards for Holiday Scourged, for the pills from Treasure Hunters, it's really, really nice. You can also create insane games and player challenges, which obviously is not a very popular attraction among the casual player, especially when there are no missions or any sort of reward involved. Anyway, Bethesda said this is the foundation for future content for something far greater, possibly mod support, so let's hope things will improve in the future and that Fallout Worlds doesn't end up like survival mode and now nuclear winter mode. Let's hope for that. It's official, Nuclear Winter is no more, the 76 Battle Royale now lives in our memories. And a lot of change just went live with patch 30. First of all, Bethesda rewards everyone who completed at least one Nuclear Winter match with his new pennant for your camp, displaying the Nuclear Winter banner. But there's more, they also compensated players using perk coins as a currency, players get 6 perk coins per Nuclear Winter perk card, earned during their playtime up to 600, and 1 perk coin per Overseer ticket earned. Yes, ticket, not rank, up to 200. This means devoted players can lock up to 800 perk coins with the Nuclear Winter shutdown. Previously, Bethesda said players could earn 6 perk coins per Overseer rank, but that is not the correct information as they have recently confirmed in one of their Inside the Vault articles. Now, what about unique Overseer rewards? Well, Bethesda already distributed about half of them between Adventure Mode activities such as public events, daily ops, faction vendors, treasure hunter pills and even holiday gifts. I know there's a lot of rewards missing here, but it's not yet clear why. Bethesda only confirmed that 6 rewards will remain exclusive and legacy-like to the mode, the trophies and the statues. 
As such, they could be planning to redistribute the rest with a future patch or add them to the Atomic Shop later on. In contrast, they might be planning to keep them as legacy rewards, exclusive to everyone who unlocked them while the Battle Royale mode was still live. But as I said, we don't know yet for sure, only time will tell. Season 6 is now live too, surprisingly, since Bethesda first announced on September 7, one day before the patch release, that they plan to delay the new season and extend season 5 for two more weeks, all because of a major bug affecting rank purchases using atoms, which were causing scoreboard freezes and preventing players from claiming the respective rewards or even any further rewards. However, during maintenance, possibly due to the community backlash, they came forward to confirm Season 6 is indeed coming live now on September 8. They are also working on a fix for this bug, and everything will go as initially planned. There is no delay anymore. They also announced compensation, a double experience and double score daily challenge events, starting on the release day and ending on September 13. Well, that was surely unexpected and very, very messy, but welcome. So enjoy the compensation for all the confusion. Moving to the season six rewards, they are live on Fallout 76 official website since the end of last week. I'm going to show them here, but the link to the page is also below the video in case you want to save the link for later. Now, season six is about the Unstoppables and the Diabolics, a comic superhero season with a lot of costumes on the way. Too bad most of them are sidekick outfits and don't look so good, in my opinion, but you probably know that by now. I have recently shared my opinion on the rewards in a news video, so feel free to check it out if you want to know more, like in great detail. For the sake of this video, I'm going to make it short. Let's go over my top six highlights. The first one is definitely the Fetch Scavenger unit, which is this lovely metal dog capable of finding dog items like bones or balls or electronics like circuits and fuses, among many other things, of course. The second and third highlights for me are the new light allies, Daphne and Maul, they come with their own buffs, trading pools and stories, just no quests, sadly, because they are not major allies, they are light allies, so that means no quests. I also made an extensive overview about them both, so if you want details on how everything will work, you know what to do. Then we have the Brewing Workbench skin with a very rustic look. It's time to make some beer, everyone. There's also the Wasteland Gong, a new peculiar type of instrument, perfect to start camp rollings, I would say. Lastly, I selected the Grognak guitar paint for the Grognak Axe. It's a beautiful electronic guitar to smash any enemy you see fit. Always in style, though. There are many other rewards, obviously, mostly cosmetics, so I highly recommend you to watch the official Season 6 trailer if you haven't yet, just in case you wish to see even more rewards in motion. The link is also below the video. Enjoy! With the nuclear winter shutdown, Vault 51 had no purpose anymore, so Bethesda decided to make it accessible to everyone in adventure mode with a few changes and tricks, starting with the main door. I'm not going to spoil you much here because it's actually fun to explore Vault 51, I surely took my sweet time there and I reached over rank 100 in Nuclear Winter. As such, I can say that it can be very interesting even for veteran players. And that's mostly because the Nuclear Winter Vault 51 changed a bit. It's not exactly the same as it used to be. Yep, Bethesda actually added a series of easter eggs inside, as well as enemies, dweller corpses here and there, a boss, a loot box, and well, let's not forget about the small mini-game they added, with several locked areas and keys around the place to access them. There's also tons of lore and holotapes to collect. If you hardly played Nuclear Winter and never reached rank 100, then this will feel like a brand new location to you, because the vault is huge and there's plenty to explore either way. Well, I hope you have fun! 
Daily Operations just received the second expansion, but unfortunately, it's nowhere as large and rich as the first one. But as the added three old locations to the rotation, players can now venture forward through Arctos Pharma, Duncanny Caverns and Watoga High School. Three very distinct locations with very different levels of difficulty too. However, they only added one new type of enemy. Players can now fight communists which can either come in the shape of humans, ghouls or robots, the liberators to be more specific. And their boss too, the communist commissioner in power armor, is pretty strong. To polish the expansion Bethesda added a new mode, which is not really new, it's basically a merge of existing mutations. They also added some more new rewards, which I will go over in the next points. Let's dive in. The new mode is called Double Mutations and it's going to be a new community event every other weekend, as Bethesda already revealed. Basically, they combined existing enemy mutations and paired them up to create new mutation entries. The list is vast and it's part of the patch notes already. As you can see, there are pairs for every taste, like Toxic with Freezing, Camouflage with Swift, Regen with Freezing and so forth. It definitely increases the difficulty and requires a little bit more strategy to finish under 8 minutes. I had a chance to do some 20 operations in the PTS to test things out and I must confess, some double mutations make things very interesting, especially for bloodied builds, because it is now a true challenge not to die when you are facing certain double mutations. But there is more. To encourage players to take the double mutation challenge, Bethesda added some bonus rewards, such as double experience, double currency rewards, and up to six legendary cores from every operation finished in Elder Mode. And that's right, this means double mutation ops events will serve as a reliable way to farm legendary cores from now on, which is absolutely lovely, don't you think so? What about the new Daily Ops rewards? Well, there aren't that many to be fair. There are 13 entries in total. Keep in mind that the new Arctic armor includes 6 plants, 5 armor pieces and a helmet. And yes, we are getting yet another armor set which cannot compete with the endgame ones. This marine variation has no special effects or set bonus, nothing at all. And in terms of defense, well, it's way below Secret Service or the Brotherhood Recon, as you can see. It's a huge letdown, in my opinion. Hey, at least it looks pretty cool with this no camo paint. It's all about the visuals here. Hey, it's probably going to look good with the mannequins. Uh, uh. Yeah, I guess it's the only purpose. Anyway, with patch 30 onwards, you can also unlock the new Marlu King tube for your camp, as well as some cosmetics like the Blood Eagle Skull Lord helmet and outfit, which is a free variation of the existing Atomic Shop 1, but with lots of blood. It looks sick. I think they should have made this one the paid one instead. Then we have a new hazmat suit in plain black, it looks like this, thanks to Coffee 888 by the way for giving me this one. And finally we have two returning weapon plans, the Soul Survivor and the Mechanic's Best Friend. Both entries are or were survival mode weapons which could be unlocked by completing certain challenges when the mode was live at the time. As you can see the stats and effects are not very exciting Exciting, so yeah, I would say more weapon plans for the collection. Let's proceed. I want to finish off this essentials guide with the new Halloween stuff in the game files already. Let's start with a name and a date. Spooky Scourged is the name of the new Halloween event for 2021 and it should start on October 19, lasting until November 2. This new community event will replace the old Mischief Night, a seasonal event that went live only once and never again. Now Spooky Scourged is basically a copy-paste of the existing Holiday Scourged, 
as the game files show. Some entries are still labeled as holiday gifts and stuff from Holiday Scorched. But well, if, if it's a copy of the event, it makes sense that they use pretty much the same stuff. The Scorched will wear Halloween costumes now though, like the witch, skeleton, mummy and jack-o'-lantern outfits. And they will wear elite melee weapons like grognak axes, bear arms, supper sliders, Chinese swords and others. They will also drop a new item, the spooky treat bag, which will unlock a different rewards pool. According to the data miner Garrist, this rewards pool is no more, no less than the old one from Mischief Night with no new additions. Boo. But let's not jump into conclusions yet because it's still over a month until the beginning of the event. So maybe, just maybe, Bethesda will add a few new rewards to this extensive list to give everyone, new and veteran players, the opportunity to farm for something. Plus, it doesn't look like the entries are finished yet. There's some stuff missing there. So hopefully they are still working on the event and will deliver something more. Anyhow, if you are curious about how the rewards look like, at least the ones we know so far. I went over all of the rare ones for Mischief Night a while ago, so feel free to check it out. It includes a series of rare costumes and camp Halloween decors. Lastly, this event will go live with matching challenges as well, dailies and weeklies as you can see. They are supposed to reward players with repair kits, three per challenge, so if nothing changes, you guys will be able to stock up on repair kits during Halloween 2021. Don't miss it. Okay, as the last point, I selected another new event, part of update 30. It's the Trick or Treat camp event, which should go live with Spooky Scorched. It's like a mini event sort of activity, really. This is how it will work, though. Bethesda will release a new camp item for candy, similar to the drinking trick ball we have already except now it's for candy, not for drinking, then players can build it, add candy to it. What candy? We don't know yet, but I suspect it will be the mysterious candy dropped by Spooky Scorched. And then other players dressed in costumes can come by and loot candy from such bowls every 60 minutes. There's a huge cooldown to ensure player candy bowls won't get depleted in a blink of an eye and ruin the Halloween spirit. Also, it prevents spam or troll looting, so it's well thought in my opinion. Other than that, this mini event is a great incentive to go wild with your camp creations and come up with the utmost spooky camp the world has ever seen. That's it regarding brand new content added to Fallout 76 with the Fallout Worlds or Update 30. I know some of these features are not exactly enabled yet, for instance the Halloween content is scheduled for mid-October, but it's in the game files already, plus Bethesda has been slowly unveiling details about them, just like they did at QuakeCon 2021. Alright then, I hope I could provide you all the details you need to tackle the new patch and avoid feeling overwhelmed. There's lots of changes and fixes too, but that will come in another video, so stay tuned if you want to learn more about a new DLC. I am Marta Branco, thanks for watching. Keep in mind this video contains footage from several weeks of testing during the PTS, so if the footage is not always spot on, that's probably why. But as that tends to change things over and over, it's completely natural as part of the PTS process. Feel free to leave a like, comment below all these things if you enjoyed the video and if you want to support me even further. As usual, a huge thanks to all my dear supporters, you guys are the best. As for me, I will see you all very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!